Welcome to the Eczema Warrior Podcast. I'm your host, Julia Chen. I'm here to help you heal your eczema naturally so you can finally live your best damn life. Many years ago in my own eczema healing journey, I was stuck and confused on how to heal my skin. Fast forward to today, after many lessons learned and lots of trial and error, I'm now living my best life and traveling the world with clearer skin. If you're an eczema or TSW warrior who desires a life of food freedom and is wanting to heal your skin without steroids while using mindset and manifestation as a tool, you're in the right place. Now let's get into it. Hello, welcome to episode 56. Let's get into a life update because as you guys know, I have left Thailand. Oh my God, I feel like the four months I've spent in Thailand literally flew by in four days. Like, why does it feel like that? Is this what happens when you get older? It's just that four months feels like four days. Five years feels like five months. <laughs> I'm just like, where the frick did the time go? Like, time just flew by so fast. I had an amazing time. Thailand was amazing. I did a bit of a recap on my Instagram stories last week. Um, Some of you guys asked me questions about how it was. And so shared a little bit about that. And now I'm actually officially in Da Nang, Vietnam. I'm actually in a city right next to the beach, which is freaking amazing. You guys know I love the ocean. I'm such a beach girl. I got here a couple days ago and I haven't gone into the ocean yet, but because I'm going to be here for two months, I'm going to have plenty of time to do that. But it's nice here in Da Nang because you can actually run, not on the beach. Well, you can run on the beach on the sand, but it's probably difficult to do that. But there is a path around, like along the beach that you can run on. There's a lot of people who go running along there. So I did that last night and it was really nice and refreshing. There's something about the ocean that's just very healing for me. And I'm just, it just helps me a lot when I'm feeling stressed or feeling like I need to ground myself in nature, then I'll find myself at the beach. So, so far it's been amazing. I've only been a day here, so can't say too much about the actual city, but overall vibe that I'm getting is good. It's a lot more intense, I would say, than Thailand in the sense that the driving here is kind of (laughs) crazy. There are a couple of times where like the driver that drives me around, like they're Uber drivers, but it's called Grab here in Asia they would like hold on to me to make sure I wouldn't get hit by a car like on the side of the road because I guess I was just like standing too close to the edge or whatever. But it's not even that though. It's just because these these drivers, they like really are kind of insane. But <laughs> all is fine. Other than that, like love it here. The weather's nice. The food's amazing. Vietnamese food is my favorite type of cuisine. So yeah, that's basically an update. And then for the rest of March, actually, I'm going to be around Vietnam. So I have some friends from Canada, my two really close friends, they're coming to Vietnam to travel. And I'm going to be meeting up with them in different parts of Vietnam. So we're going to go to the islands, we're going to go to Ho Chi Minh City, which is a very popular tourist destination. We're going to Hanoi. And yeah, it's going to be good. So I'll be doing lots of traveling in March and the podcast will still be on. I'll still be releasing episodes. I wanted to do a free training, a group call at some point, but I didn't want to bite off more than I could chew. So we're going to hold off on that. And when I'm back to Da Nang and not moving so much around, then I'll be back at it with creating some resources and trainings and things like that for April. So definitely stay tuned for that. Okay, the other update that I want to share with you guys besides my life update is I'm making some changes to my practice. So as you know, this podcast is all about eczema. It's about how to heal eczema. It's about mindset, TSW. And even on my Instagram at juliachen.rd, I also talk a lot about eczema. However, as I've been reflecting and seeing my clients over the past three and a half years or almost three and a half years, The thing about healing eczema is it's really about healing the entire body because all of your systems, all of your organs are related. We're not treating our skin by just looking at the skin, right? We're looking at our gut health. We're looking at the mind-body connection. We're looking at hormones. We're looking at gut dysbiosis. We're looking at food sensitivity. There's a, a lot of different aspects that we're looking at. 
So when my clients are healing, not only is there eczema healing, but all of the other symptoms that come along with eczema, gut issues, PMS, hormonal imbalance, they also heal as well. So the change that I'm going to be implementing in my practice is that I'm also going to be seeing clients now who don't have to have eczema. They can just be dealing with general inflammation, digestive issues. They just want to improve their diet, their lifestyle. I'm happy to support those who need help with that. So if you guys know anyone that needs support when it comes to this, I can help them with that. Uh, I am licensed as a registered dietitian, so I can see clients in Canada, but also all over the world as well. So that's basically a chain, a slight change in my practice, not too big of a change, but a bit of a shift. So I can start seeing more clients and help more people instead of just having eczema as my niche. So with that being said, today's topic is about five ways to improve your digestion. I'm going to be diving into why digestion is important, how you should optimize your digestion, So when it comes to your digestion, it's very, very important to have a digestive system that is working efficiently. Having good digestion is crucial because your body needs to be able to digest and break down the foods that you consume every day. If you cannot break down the food that you're consuming, then that means the nutrients that you get from food isn't going to be utilized for energy, for skin, for your overall well-being and your overall health, right? So that's why when I always tell my clients, it's not just what you eat, it's also what you absorb and what you digest. And this is why you see a lot of people who eat all organic, they're very conscious of like avoiding processed foods, they eat very healthy, but they seem to still have inflammation and seem to have chronic symptoms. Besides the fact that there's other root causes that could be creating these symptoms, One of the reasons is because maybe they're not digesting and absorbing the foods that they're eating. So when you're trying to heal from any kind of inflammation or chronic symptoms, whether it's eczema or gut issues, there's a huge link between these symptoms and your digestion and your gut health. So we do want to make sure that we optimize our digestion as much as possible so that we can heal these symptoms and heal inflammation. Proper digestion is also closely linked to your immune system. 80% of your immune system actually resides in the gut. So if you don't have good digestion, then it's likely that you don't have a good immune system. The gut-brain connection is also what connects the digestive system with the central nervous system, which is your brain. And there's bidirectional communication between the two. So if there are issues in the gut, then it's also going to impact your mental health. It's going to impact your mood. It's going to impact your cognitive function. So with all that being said, this is why having good digestion is really important. Not to forget that digestion is key for detoxification. It helps to filter and eliminate toxins and chemicals and substances out of the body. So there's so many functions when it comes to your digestive system. So keeping that in mind, we want to make sure that we're optimizing as much as possible. So five easy ways to optimize your digestion. Number one, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this, but a lot of us actually don't implement it. (laughs) And that is to slow down when you're eating and to practice mindful eating. Digestion doesn't start in the gut. It actually starts in your mouth. There are enzymes that have to break down food in your saliva. You have your teeth, right, (laughs) to break down and chew food properly. And so if you're just eating really fast and you're swallowing your food without really chewing it properly, then you're going to burden your digestive system because it has to overwork to digest the foods properly in your gut by the time it reaches there. So the first step to optimizing your digestion is to start slowing down when you're eating. Don't eat in a rush actually take proper breaks, chew your food very well. We usually say chew your food 20 to 30 times until the food in your mouth becomes applesauce consistency. The second way to optimize digestion, which is kind of related to the first way, is to manage your stress, but also manage your stress before you eat as well. Because first of all, when you're stressed, your body's in fight or flight. When your body's in fight or flight, your body is going to be focusing on running away from the tiger. It's not going to be focusing on digestion. So if you're a chronically stressed person, 
you're not going to be absorbing and digesting your food very well. And that's just the science behind how that works. Now, before you eat, managing your stress is also very important because if you're anxious going into your meal, then you're naturally, first of all, going to eat very fast. But again, your body's in fight or flight. So even though you're eating all the healthy foods, you're not actually digesting the food. So usually I say when you're feeling stressed around mealtimes, you want to do some breath work. Even just doing five deep breaths before eating a meal can be really helpful in regulating the nervous system. So that's one side tip for you to help you with optimizing your digestion. The third way to optimize your digestion is to have proper meal timing. So I know a lot of us are busy, right? We have families, we have kids. Well, I don't have family or kids, but a lot of you may be listening. You have kids, you have family, you have, you have a job, you have school or whatever it is. And sometimes when we get in the hustle bustle of things, we don't actually eat on the right time. You might often skip meals, you might miss lunch, you might miss dinner. And that's going to impact your digestion negatively, okay? It's important to try and have consistent meals at consistent times. So have your breakfast, have your lunch, and have your dinner. If you have days in the week where you have a big gap between a meal, for example, you are having lunch at 12 and then you know that you're going to be busy all day and you won't eat till 8 p.m., then always have a snack of some sort so that you can have something in your stomach rather than nothing. And making sure that snack is protein rich is going to be important as well. So meal timing is really key when it comes to digestion. The next way to optimize your digestion is to limit intake of processed foods. So processed foods usually are things like sweets, sugary snacks, fried foods, um, fast food, for example. And usually these type of foods are very high in sugar and fat. And so these ingredients can actually cause digestive issues. I know some of you might experience this. You might notice when you eat processed foods, you get bloating, you get gas. Some people get diarrhea or constipation. And so when you're dealing with these digestive symptoms, it's going to be difficult for your body to break down food and to absorb food efficiently. Also, with processed foods, they're often low in fiber. And we need good amounts of fiber daily in order to have healthy digestion and a healthy microbiome. So do your best to limit processed foods. But I also say this with caution because I know a lot of you listening to this podcast actually limit too much that you become actually stressed out about how much you have to limit. I always tell my clients and you guys to do everything in moderation. It's okay to have processed foods once in a while. Don't beat yourself over it if you do have days where you do indulge, it's totally fine. It's not going to impact your digestion to the point where it makes your healing go backwards or anything like that. It's all about moderation and just being mindful. Because over time, if you consistently eat processed foods, then yes, of course, it'll impact your digestion. But if you're doing it once in a while, don't worry too much about it. Okay, the last thing I want to mention when it comes to optimizing your digestion is to balance your meals with protein, fats, and fiber. So this is really important for your microbiome, for your overall gut health, is to eat balanced meals. When you're eating balanced meals, you're definitely getting the amount of nutrients your body needs to heal, the amount of nutrients that your digestive system needs as well, given that you are also slowing down when you're eating. And of course, when you have a diversity in your diet, because you're being intentional with the different proteins and different fiber and fats in your diet, then it's going to help with your gut microbiome. And I always say the more variety you get in your diet, the better for your microbiome and the better for your digestion. So these are the five tips I have for improving your digestion. Slow down when you eat, practice mindful eating, manage your stress, be mindful of meal timing, don't skip meals, limit intake of trigger foods and balance meals with protein, fats, and fiber. If you need more help with this, when it comes to your eczema healing, your gut health, inflammation, you want a registered dietitian to help you with all of this, this is exactly what I do in my practice, and we're taking new clients right now. I would love to support you to help you with your nutrition, but not only that, I also help my clients with stress and mindset. This is what I do inside my coaching, but also in my packages as well. If you want to work with me, you can simply send me a message on my Instagram at juliachan.rd or you can even email me 
Or if you want to apply for my coaching program that focuses more on eczema, then you can go to the show notes below to do that. And that's what I have for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a quick and easy one. Um, and let me know what you think. Leave us a review. This will help the podcast grow. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Now, before I let you go, I want to let you know I have this amazing eczema visualization. This visualization has helped me so much when it comes to manifesting eczema healing, healing flares faster than I can ever imagine, reducing the itch, and just feeling great in my body. This is the exact same visualization I use for my own healing as well as my client's healing as well. And if you want to receive this visualization, then all you have to do is leave us a review and tell us what you think about the podcast, screenshot it, send it to your email at hello at juliachin.ca and you will receive the visualization to your inbox. I look forward to seeing your review and we'll see you in the next episode. 